also have Abhishek and Jagdish on the uh, uh, call here. We are all from Atria, and we are excited to start this series uh, with uh, literally a bank because we are talking about cyber security, which is very much the uh, you know a, a topic that has been trending for a while now. And we have two trending people as well on the webinar who came on at very short notice. Thank you for that, Mr. Satish and uh, Mr. Vinod. Um, I, to, to quickly introduce them, I, I will not be doing complete justice, but I will just give a kind of a broad introduction to who our uh, guests for today are. Uh, we have Satish Kumar Vibashi, who has about uh, over 30 years of experience in IT and information security. He is currently the Chief Information Security Officer at Credit B, which is a growing non-banking financial company. He has also held key roles in the InMobi Group and IBM India prior to this. Then we have Mr. Vinod Babu, who has about two decades, 20 years of experience in information technology, specific to domains such as telecom, information and cybersecurity. And he's delivered consulting and capacity building projects in cybersecurity across the GCC and Asia Pacific countries. And very interestingly, he is uh, he is, in research, he's uh, focused on proactive darknet crime investigation. So for all you, uh, uh, all you uh, geeks interested in darknet cases, I think you should reach out to him for first-hand experience that he might have had in this. So with that brief introduction, I would like to move into the webinar directly because we are already about eight minutes into the scheduled time. I'd like to begin by asking our uh, guests um, a first question about, you know, maybe a little personal, but it would it would provide kind of an inspiration to all those who have joined here because the audience is primarily students of uh, high school eight upwards, standard eight upwards to 12, perhaps their parents and the school counselors as well. So, um, uh, Mr. Satish, I'll be starting with you. It would be very interesting if we could find uh, understand your journey to where you are now. What inspired you into cybersecurity? Were there other options? How did this happen? Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Anupama. And uh, so, since as you introduced it, it's a three-decade experience. It's a very long journey. I don't want to uh, take a lot of time. So just quickly, uh, while after my education. Uh, uh, I started my journey with, uh, of course, uh, IT. Uh, 30 years back, it was called as EDP. I'm sure it's a very old name, Electronic Data Processing. Data processing. So those those days, mainframes and mid-range computers and also, that's how my journey started. And typically, uh, people, a lot of people progress from IT to information security. Like, of course, now uh, cyber security or information security has become a, it's like a dedicated domain. But earlier it was an extension to IT only, right? it's more of protecting the IT infrastructure. Uh, if you ask me, this whole domain started, uh, especially after the whole internet uh, bandwagon started. Uh, otherwise it was very closed door, you know, we used to call glass door, a large mainframe sitting in a room. Uh, and I, I started my journey from there, uh, but very passionate on technology. So in fact, uh, so after maybe one decade of my IT experience, uh, somehow I uh, got introduced to this whole this whole domain uh, with a certification called CISA that is Certified Information Systems Auditor. That's how I got introduced to this domain. And uh, that then the whole journey shifted from, see, as I told you, IT extension is security. So all my knowledge, what I applied for more than a decade on various like SAP implementations of IT, that has helped me to get into this domain. So it was a very different journey altogether. And of course, for the last two decades, I've been very actively in this domain. And I love this domain because uh, there's so much of things happens, right? Every day there's a new day, right? Every day it keeps us on our toes and you have to keep learning. So that's the quick uh, summary. But anyway, uh, guys who, my name is unique. You can type my name in LinkedIn and you'll find my whole journey on LinkedIn. I don't want to take more time here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Satish. Over to you, Mr. Vinod. Good to hear Satish's journey, where it started. You know, it, it reminds me uh, my experience as well. So, yeah, way back, uh, so I would, I would like to quote something which, uh, you know, I've come across. Uh, when I got into graduation, <clears throat> the first day, uh, you know, as, as a joining ceremony in the graduation, 
Uh, my chairman, our uh, college chairman, was addressing the cohorts who are all there in the college. At that point in time, I have asked him a question. Right? Uh, see, what if if I'm not interested to learn computers? Right? By then, you know, I'm talking about as as, as rightly said by Satish, it was a three eighty six, four eighty six transitional time, more or less. Right? Three eighty six, four eighty six computers and uh, the bulk ones, bulk heads, you could say that. So I've this I've asked this question like uh, what happens if I don't learn uh, computers so down the line so it's uh, quoted that you'd be treated as an uh, as an illiterate down the line in 20 years you'd find yourself like you know, you're out of uh, game out of the game that's a, that's a, that's what it, it is going to be so that made me actually create an exit so I uh, during my graduation uh, I started using the computers and uh, by then we have you know that's that's when the internet now uh, bandwagon really started uh, yahoo chat windows right so very few sites across the world i still remember when uh, uh, clinton uh, clinton has uh, visited india hyderabad he has addressed uh, in uh, uh, cyber towers in hyderabad he's he's uh, quoted that the time when he has taken the chair as a president of uh, un states it was close to about 100 to uh, between 300 to 400 websites were there across the world and uh, by the time i think it was 99 uh, 2000 he has visited india at the point in time it was close to about 1 million so now today we are in billions of websites across so we see a lot of uh, now change you know. it's, it's a paradigm shift you would say that technology wise so during this journey uh, what i felt is like uh, using this uh, communication medium internet so coming from a small town so using those dial up connections by then updating ourselves from whatever the information that is available on websites and communicating it was like exciting to connect with the people connect with the you now people abroad using the chat mess i am messengers right so sharing the knowledge from th that's when exactly from the mails we started moving on to the ims instant messengers at that point in time uh, something uh, you know it started uh, tackling me in terms of uh, looking into an options of reverse engineering that's where now, I always try to learn something about uh, now what's a hacking. By then, I, I hope uh, Satish must be knowing. There was one popular website called as Nastala Vista. So it's a popular uh, black hat website, right? So very few websites were. So following the blogs over there, you know, reading the chat rooms, Yahoo chat rooms. So starting to understand what a reverse engineering is, what is a forward engineering, and how exactly the hacking would take place. What's a virus? How it is called as a virus? Called as a virus. So this is something which has now triggered every day a new learning. Uh, down plan now uh, started. Uh, I have completed. Uh, by the time I completed my graduation, then I got an opportunity to work with the law enforcement agency because of you now by then I was working on the ready for mail, hot mails, you know, these areas. So law enforcement agency has given an op opportunity to work with them. And then uh, yep, subsequently I think every day. It gives it, it, it excites me. There's something new to learn in this area. And ever since then, I've, I've been finding something you know, as, as a move forward, something new is coming in. And uh, that's that's what I actually pulled me to complete almost 26 certifications in this area and uh, you know, even PhD in the same area. So that's that's a journey I would like to share with you all. So that's something uh, what I would like to put forward. <laughs> Thank you. And and I think what I understand from both of you said the common thread is that it's a con you know, there's change. Every day is a new day, like Mr. Satish put it. So if in, in this thing about every day being a new day, it means that, you know, it's literally like you have to keep running or you have to really keep abreast of what's happening because it's constantly evolving. So how do you keep pace with it? I mean, is there have you made a schedule for yourself where you have make out time to keep abreast of things or are there other ways to do it because this is something all the students here who are here will have to learn as well because computer science itself is a very evolving field and cyber security more so so any kind of tips or you know secrets that work for you okay i'll Sat start yeah i'll start so so basically if you ask me the learning uh, is a continuous and uh, it is not that you sit and learn. The domain itself is so dynamic that uh, you are bound to learn, especially uh, on a lighter note. Right? The the bad guys, right? The adversaries, right? Will keep you on your toes. It's like uh, the traditional what you call chore police game. You know, like it's not that the police has to 
learn techniques right i think they also learn by how the adversaries right uh, i think so that's very interesting because the the whole domain if you look at cyber security as a domain and if you look at my position as a ceo uh, it is basically to secure the enterprise especially against the cyber threats which are so constant continuous so so while of course we uh, we ensure that uh, the systems are protected the overall environment is protected so because the cyber especially is is very dynamic as the industry is moving very fast very quick especially we see right every uh, i i usually call it the hype cycle right every 2 uh, 3 years 4 5 years you see a lot of hypes now if you look at few years back it was blockchain right and now suddenly people are talking only ai right chat gpt has become the uh, flavor of the what it's the season now right i'm sure something else will come in so i, I think uh, it's all about the passion what you have it drives you to keep learning constantly but i think it's all about solving business problems i will not call this just like you just learn uh, because you're trying to solve certain business problems so traditionally this was like a domain which was not so uh, in fact uh, focused if i can say uh, enterprises were not giving much of attention to this domain if you ask me maybe many years back it was more compliance driven because you tend to do all this for the sake of compliance you know i'm i'm sure you, we all understand it's it's like a tick in the box like a bank has to be compliant you know against regulations or an insurance company has to comply against uh, certain regulations like so while it started as with as a compliance journey but today because the whole business runs on technology so i, I basically want to take a step back and explain to the audience that today every enterprise small medium large even even like we individuals right i think we also consume so much of technology right we are embracing the technology like day in day out and today a lot of enterprises not necessarily the large ones even not necessarily the it enabled ones even a traditional manufacturing company right runs they uses lot they use lot of technology right today your whole billing accounting happens on erp right so especially your sap kind of uh, systems so the point is more and more enterprises are dependent on technology because of, uh, especially it's very hard to believe any enterprise not embracing technology right so the more and more the technology becomes the backbone for the enterprise because it's no more just a support function it's a backbone like today the cio ctos are driving business if you look at uh, they are actually speaking helping the board to scale they helping the board to generate more revenue if you take example of a a bank like icici bank if i remove technology there is no bank honestly speaking it, it, it's such a uh, technology driven bank and or you look at a, a manufacturing company like a ford motors or a maruti suzuki if i remove erp there is no the, the factory cannot exist the factory plant will come to a shutdown so in that context when enterprises are so much dependent on technology now if that technology is unavailable compromised breached or any adversaries right who are trying to and that's the whole risk we are talking about the cyber, the cyber risk and that is the reason why today it has this domain has come to the main mainstream earlier this was more like a support function you know it's like a back office you know like a, you go to a restaurant you you never bother about the kitchen right you you, you look at the the front end all that uh, shiny objects the the back end is not so visible but today so traditionally it and information security was a support function but today it has come to mainstream because of all the cyber breaches cyber attacks or all the intrusions has really created in fact a huge damage for the enterprises is today a cyber breach or a cyber attack or any intrusion for that matter like of course you know it's it's so much today i'm sure we all read in newspaper right to this like even a large enterprise like cognizant had a recently ransomware attack it's all there in public news now it is, so there are very serious organizations but the point is there is a huge business impact now that is where actually the cyber security domain right it's not just i know my friend spoke about ethical hacking it's not just and it's always look to start with ethical hacking but it's about you need a army of people especially in, in, if you look at large enterprise like all this infosys wipro tcs right such a huge workforce you also need a very knowledgeable team to manage this whole cyber adversaries right and basically how do i 
while we can't stop the attacks but then we need to be prepared you know it's like it's you have to be prepared so i think today enterprises are spending a lot on how to protect the enterprise assets especially what i have spoken about the whole technology what they invested in hence it's a it's a amazing domain right it's not uh, while people start with uh, some security analyst but all the way from security analyst to all the way the journey can go up the ladder right you can probably reach the board even like today as a ciso right the ciso works with the board and uh, the ciso drives the business today it's not just a support function anymore so i i just want to paint the bigger picture because it's while it starts with a uh, i know people start with the, some networking it's it's a great start of course to secure your network secure your systems but then the journey can be all the way basically adding business value uh, anyway i'll stop here as we said keep talking so while uh, i just want to uh, basically set the broader context on how large this domain and how important this domain is becoming especially to drive business value it's all about delivering value back to the business thank you thank you mr satish that was very interesting to listen to and see the gamut of functions that are available there uh, mr vinod yep so yeah um, uh, as i just said the most important thing that we find today the biggest challenge is uh, the kind of resources availability versus the kind of threats that we have more importantly cyber security is not uh, you know one stop or one one single uh, achievement like or uh, you, you build a technology you, you buy a firewall you implement an edr solution right with which uh, you can say that yes we are protected we are 100% we are complete with it or maybe we we are up to date up to date and att- uh, attacks wouldn't take place so they every day we see a new type of attacks and uh, the knowledge to what you have as of yesterday about the threats this vulnerable uh, vulnerabilities or the adversaries is obsolete today unless you really keep update yourself and most importantly i would uh, put forth one thing is uh, this is uh, this is not once you enter into the cyber uh, cyber security area it's no more like a pain or a pressure that learning or constant updating your knowledge you'll enjoy this journey every day you'll be finding uh, you'll, you'll find a reason why uh, you need to read the blogs you'll find some reason something new uh, you no know, take back to be there so every day you'll be finding something uh, a new learning so security testing or ethical hacking or any of this is one small part of it understanding the people process and technology put together and uh, which would cover all three dimensions of the organization and on the other side attackers are you now their, their strategies are changing the way they approach the way their attacks takes place right so they change so you'll find a new type of uh, and as we speak now there could be hundreds and thousands of uh, new malwares which are being evolved and new you now tactics or a new techniques uh, the attackers might have come up with so it's very important constantly you know we don't, you don't need to spend hours together and every day read uh, continuously and uh, you know learn a new tool but it's very important to understand fundamental conceptually to be very clear on you know what is cyber security and uh, you know, what what are, what what exactly your enterprise needs or what exactly the industry is looking at you the kind of attack uh, attacker size is like a chinese on so it's pretty big you now you run a botnet uh, attack kind of a thing so you'll find a uh, millions of uh, you know attacks probes uh, coming from a uh, different ip addresses different you know uh, points and different net uh, as and networks and uh, the security you uh, know people the professionals are in limited in numbers so that's one uh, reason you know, the attacks are too high and you have a huge gap in that so to fill in this gap it's very important to you know to learn the subject to the market and understand so because it's a wide range of uh, career options you have in cyber security so to create a path or to lead towards that path it's very important to select uh, you know what exactly uh, interests you could be onto the gis side could be onto the compliance side could be onto the you know t- uh, testing side or into the security analysis side so various options that you have so each one of these option would need one thing in common is uh, you need uh, you need to be abreast with the you know concepts in terms of an ad- adversaries part as well as the counter measures that you could take and uh, most importantly uh, understanding the aftermath and lessons that could be learned and implemented so that you can protect the organization from all attacks and it is not uh, limited to it most importantly the people think that cyber security is limited to it so 
everywhere in every domain you find cyber security today so we are going to talk about this point more in detail uh, when we will talk about the stem but yes so it's very important no constantly update i would say for the younger generations that are there here in this session yeah it's good to spend the time on social media at least at, at 15 to 20% of the time you take up to read follow the influencers follow the you know new attacks or new adversaries when you are when you want to pursue you know your career down the line in cyber security so you should focus on now what are all the new things that are happening around as rightly said my friend earlier blockchain artificial intelligence so when we talk about artificial intelligence on a positive note yes artificial intelligence is something you now which could improve the security you know which could really help in terms of uh, you know building uh, a strong uh, uh, technology you know, infrastructure but the, at the same point in time on a negative notion artificial intelligence could be used for exploitation like the warm gpts or fraud gpts or various type of you no know, you know the chat gpt so the antonyms of it i would say that so you have uh, you know good and bad sides of it so learning this is what very important organizations are looking forward you see the, the organizations are looking forward down the line once you complete the engineering let's say so all of a sudden you don't have everything you no know, imbibed into it right now you have ict one good opportunity that you have which we didn't have you no know, back then was a uh, minimum no new what is an ict right so you have that as part of your curriculum today so it's very important to learn no it's not just uh, for the purpose of you no know, as we have a subject you no know, all of the subject is being dealt in a similar way but in, instead of that create some practical uh, knowledge at the schools also it's very important so that they'll start working on the project a small project could be you know, at least for their good for their learning right so this is one of the methodology that uh, could implement at your uh, level and keep watching use the netflix spend time but again i said 15 to 20% use it for like watching documentaries on uh, which is related to you know camera analytics right so which is related to uh, data security so there is something which is or could be an any movies right like you know the hero movies uh, of uh, in a japanese uh, style and korean style you have a lot of movies which are related to cyber security so these are the things you know which will create a foundation so opt for the entertainment so that uh, these are all the best possible methods through which you can keep yourself uh, updated on this technology thank you thank you uh, mr satish and mr vinod so the uh, while i mean broadly what what you're saying is that the the fundamentals need to be there and once you have the fundamentals and you are you stay abreast of what is happening in the field you will also build on what is necessary for you to be able to perform well in different roles and there are a variety of roles that one could seek uh, now the uh, students who are with us many of them they, like i uh, mentioned before they range from standard 8 to perhaps standard 12 and maybe there are some parents here as well and school counselors from ib schools so um they are all people who will in due course get there i mean they have some time to be able to enter industry given that they have about at least say uh, around 4 years time to get there what skills do you think they need to start building on now mr satish yeah, yeah. so so i don't want to uh, call out any specific uh, thing like i think whatever uh, especially in the whole stem if you look at uh, uh, whatever they are studying uh, so so Uh, but as they move forward, they will understand the interest in which they they really want to excel. Like, like for example, if you look at uh, see cyber security, as my uh, friend told that uh, it's it's not just about technology alone, right? It's people, process, technology, and uh, like I normally say, like uh, for example, if you if you are good in systems, uh, system security. or even 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 someone right especially uh, as they move forward like example a developer who knows how to write code so there there is a code security like just example like, so security cyber security can be it's a very broad domain not necessarily so i normally when i teach i, I talk about you need to have a very broad view not necessarily you need to so i think at this point of time having a a reasonable amount of understanding on how systems work i think we're talking cyber security so the overall how cyber as a domain right if you look at how cyber is solving certain business problems understand the nitty gritties of systems basically it's all about you know software hardware the whole cloud how the whole systems are integrated so i think at this as the 
and innovate anyway, and technology is not new right even for a class 8 child right today they, they get up with whatsapp and get up with instagram they get up with uh, as we know said it uh, they watch movies so i think so i think they need to find their own passion like see some people are good in networking some people are good in software development some people like maybe good in data science so if you ask me there is a cyber element in every domain especially if you are good in systems system security if you are good in development there is a in fact those are the real guys see especially there are a lot of flaws and vulnerabilities in the code right written by developers because they never thought of writing secure code so there is so a developer can he can only understand relate the problems in the software code so in that context if you look at uh, the the cyber as a domain like of course system security network security uh, software security platform security and as the other emerging technologies if you look at cloud right I, i'm sure we are all talking everything on cloud today so cloud security is one completely a domain which will i'm sure it is not that we're going to go out of cloud right the cloud models may change like public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud but cloud security is a very interesting domain and then the other as we move move in fact as we are moving already forward with a world of connected devices do you agree like we are we are living in a world of connected devices i'm sure the whole iot security 5g i think 5g has come in now 5g security so i think and then as we spoken about blockchain iot ai as my friend said it right? because it's all ai is great but then there will be a lot of ai misuse cases right because ai is all about data if the data is poisoned right if the data is poisoned you may get wrong results so i think the point is there are so much of so many use cases in this domain so i think each each one of them will have their own interest now it's too early i think you have to just go by what what are they trying to learn but as they go along right i think even today not everyone in it domain are becoming a developer right so some people want to get into systems some want to get into a development in development also some would like like to prefer java some would like to prefer to some abap in sap so there are different streams so while if you ask me the common thread fundamentally systems the underlying infrastructure i call it as the infrastructure is there there's a software code running there are applications so security is in every layer every layer and i think as they move along and they start knowing themselves it's all about knowing yourself right for example uh, some people discover very late oh i cannot sit and do development i'm i have very good analytical skills i would like to analyze problem i am a problem solver probably they are very good in security operations because security operations you have to keep constantly look at analyze problem right because you have to think like a adversary you know i think or there are guys who are very good in like for example uh, 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 finding issues right they can go to forensics so today so there are different streams so as they go along the way of course while certain fundamental computing certain fundamental systems knowledge is required but as they move in fact today a lot of people discover at very later stage oh i am very good in this and better i need to go into that domain so there is audit there is governance there is risk management so there is a whole lot in the cyber domain so i, I don't want to uh, name out point certain skills so what are you good in continue doing that and basically my point is build passion around what you're doing that's very important and then as you build the passion and as we spoken right it's a continuous learning and you keep discovering yourself and you definitely find your way uh, and you finally see that oh this is what exactly i want to do and and again you see i'm sure my friend we know that myself right we also kept on changing gears right it's not that uh, what i was doing 10 years back i'm not doing the same thing today right probably 10 years back i was doing a lot of hacking or ethical hacking or application testing but today i don't do that but of course my job is to mentor my team but today i moved up the ladder i talk more governance i talk more risk management so i think it's a continuous evolution and you uh, you evolve yourself and uh, it's a great domain and just just keep your fundamentals right and uh, keep your mind open and i'm sure there's a long way to go sorry to keep it long <laughs> <laughs> thank you no no it wasn't mr vinod yeah so yeah conquering with uh, what uh, my friend satish has said so just to put forth when you are talk about cyber security 
uh, just to give you a simple definition, cybersecurity is uh, would cover you know, frameworks, would cover the technologies, cover the tools. So it is independent of. Uh, so it is not you know, connected with any specific technologies or uh, no, attributed to any specific domain. So it is everywhere. Now, biggest challenge today the industry is facing. Uh, facing I think uh, uh, Satish would also concur with me. Organizations, as he he has quoted this point as well in uh, on the first question. Like uh, earlier, it was just a cybersecurity was just a compliance. It's just a certificate on the wall or a star on the shoulder, right? One more star on the shoulder. Like I'm complete with ISO. I'm complete with the uh, you know CMM. I'm uh, I'm 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 a cybersecurity or uh, penetration testing, information security compliant. Right, so as for twenty-seven thousand one compliant, so it's just uh, you know a, a certificate. But uh, down the line, when we see, it has become a need of the R to be. Now, the biggest challenge what we face here is uh, across the industry is we want resources. The industry needs resources, and there's a huge gap in, the, in terms of demand and supply, as I said. So the kind of resources required, the kind of adversaries that are increasing, we need a lot of resources, but uh, we don't find the resources. Resources cannot be you now. Uh, Oh, cannot be ready or uh, not we will not be ready overnight so we need time as i said no as i see from eighth standard onwards you have you know, multiple sets of people that are joined in the session there are the english hackers you know, so who has uh, done the hacking right from 14 years 15 years age so world has seen that records now for the learning and in the learning curve uh, so it's a good good uh, you know way right to start from this point you don't need to get into the ethical hacking. You don't need to get into the penetration testing or security testing or whatever it is. Don't fix the domain, what you're going to get into. But getting acquainted, well, let's say you are, you're keen with the technology. You want to get into, you, you, what excites you? Is it the computers or reverse engineering on the computers? So based on that, you know, even the mentors in the school, the ICT you know, teachers, right? So they should start you know, giving them an opportunity, like a gamification, like how we have a CTF kind of a thing related to their subject, whatever that is there in the, as a part of the CBSC curriculum or IB curriculum, whatever it is, uh, or to the university level. So whatever the curriculum that is there, according to that, uh, creating, you know, if it is a university, creating some kind of a CTF kind of an exercises, which is a real time scenario, where the inter, uh, mentor or the faculty would become like a bridge between the industry requirement as well as you know, what uh, needs to be delivered as per the standards, as per the curriculum or syllabus. So creating such kind of you know, opportunities to the students, right from you know, eighth, ninth standards onwards, you can start giving, right? Making them understand. So it's not just a ping command that you use, but why you use maybe the mentoring right from that stage. So which would give you, give them the insights that will give a foundation. What I was uh, saying earlier also, once you have foundations and concepts, you're good in, you know, at a foundation level, fundamental level, any tool, whether you work with the down the line, you have hundreds of tools today in cybersecurity in various technologies, right? Even for a law graduate, even for the BCom graduate, a commerce graduate, for everyone there is an opportunity in, in cybersecurity. It's just they need to choose which path they want to go. So it's just an, an uh, could add on. So as I rightly said, no earlier, it is not just right for uh, you know a, a developer that the organization is looking for, but it, they are looking for a secure developer. They are looking for a system administrator who has a security background. Earlier, system administrator has a defined role, right, to configure or to do the thing. So, like varied roles we have uh, across the industry today. For that, the foundation could be laid uh, right, uh, right from this point. That's what I would, uh, strongly feel. There are a lot of gamification sites, so which you know the faculty needs to get acquainted with, uh, kind of get connected, uh, get the people connected, like. You have, uh, you know, MUNs, right? So you have, uh, you know, debate uh, related or could be a kind of, uh, you know, inter-school uh, competitions. In a similar way, on ICT also, ICT front also, something needs to be done. So that would actually add more value in terms of you know, keep up with their learning. So that's what uh, something I would put across on this front, uh, Anupama. Thank you, Mr. Anup. So uh, what I understand from both uh, from both of you is that uh, one is that you get your fundamentals strong, like you reiterated, uh, like you said before as well. Now, while you're getting your fundamentals strong, you stay clued to what is happening in the industry. What is the evolution that is happening in the industry? And the point that you made, uh, Mr. Vinod, about something like months, you bring in a gamification at the school level so that that in integration into the k12 happens 
and they are able to get acquainted with what is that what exactly happens in cyber security from them so it gives them an opportunity to start building on their skills to start working in a more focused way is is what i understood from uh, both of you said which is very interesting thank you uh, because uh, i mean we have ethical we have hacking uh, uh, events i think that happens primarily only the undergrad level and i mean after school primarily so we could introduce something similar to that but more on the lines of an mun more on the lines of a something that is a gamification rather than hacking per se which which would be slightly different from the context of a hacking i mean i here i'm asking the question to both of you how how could it be would it be very different from a hacking event in what sense would it if the schools had to bring in that event So basically if you look at uh, see by we by we use this term called hacking now what exactly hacking is hacking is nothing but basically you trying to break into a system think means like a adversary you know i think the the whole notion of ethical hacking means basically if, see the whole purpose of ethical hacking is you are tuned to think like a adversary because an adversary is a unethical hacker right he is trying to hack into a system create damage and i think that's now see and mostly why students starts with ethical hacking you know it looks very attractive you know it looks see, because as when you are young you have that energy you want to break in something you know you know always breaking you want to break something but the but the purpose i normally when i go and talk in a lot of colleges i say let's understand the purpose why you are doing this the purpose of learning ethical hacking is when you finally go back to an enterprise and you're trying to secure them you know you're not breaking into the enterprise you're trying to show the enterprise that an adversary can break like this so hence let us protect the system so that the actual the unethical right the adversary will not get into the system in this route hence let's close that door i think the per- i think the very purpose of ethical hacking sometimes is is misunderstood it's not understood right. correct so i think if you understand the purpose i think the whole purpose of ethical hacking why we call it ethical because you're hacking not for fun see i know it, it was maybe 10 years back uh, hacking is more of fun you know to hack a girlfriend account or you know hack uh, it, it, it's more of college students like, like that that's where they start this but i think the whole purpose of that is now if you look at suddenly last 2 3 years there's a lot of shift between while ethical hacking still exists or it's still an very very attractive domain i'm sure you all heard of the, the system called bug bounty right suddenly oh, bug bounty really see the bug bug bounty what is bug bounty basically today all the applications are hosted on the internet and the, because it's all on the internet it's open for like flipkart or amazon or your ola or uber everything is on the internet so the point is basically there are bugs probably which are left which probably the company imagine starbucks did not find a bug which probably was left unattended but someone found it so i think suddenly bug bounty also suddenly became it's becoming new domain it's also one extension of ethical hacking right example of course the starbucks is giving you permission right see usually you cannot hack otherwise you'll be put under jail right so because you go to a particular website the website says okay you are welcome so they are welcoming you come and hack me or come and find a bug and please report to me while starbucks may say i'll give you one year free coffee right or maybe they can say okay will you find a dollar so that suddenly a new attraction for a lot of youngsters i but recently i was a speaker at uh, besides ahmedabad i was seeing 1000 2000 people right doing lot of this bug bounty so suddenly so the it, it's like a same ethical hacking one more dimension right basically ethical hacking is also basically to find bugs to find to see whether i can i hack the system how much can i penetrate and if i report that with a good with a good notion to the enterprise the enterprise will secure it so i think let's don't forget the broader objective the broader objective the enterprise has to use this technology for a good today so that technology if is misused and which creates which basically is creating a damage so to stop the damage to minimize the damage how this whole community cyber security practitioners professionals we all we all are part of the same community domain we are helping enterprises to stay secure i think let's first understand the broader objective so staying secure is the final objective staying secure against adversaries is the final objective 
Now there are different ways. Of course, youngster starts with bug bounty because they they feel that it's a good. Oh, I, I'm very good in hacking, so let me hack. Of course, you can't hack anyone. I can't hack at a college website. Then at a college, you put me under bars. But of course, if at all you have a bug bounty page, you say you are welcome and with good faith. I go back and say your website has vulnerability. Can you please fix it? You may not give me money, but you may say, "Oh, thank you, wonderful. You helped me to secure because you are a good guy." But imagine a bad guy would have come into and created damage. That would have been a much bigger reputation damage for me. So I think there are different ways to approach this domain. While, as my friend said, thick lacking, all that is a good starting point. But end of the day, the purpose of this whole domain is to ensure that the enterprise stays secure, and of course. I think that that's the broader thing which I wanted to put it. Maybe my my friend Vinod can extend it. I'm sorry, I I, I lost words. <laughs> no, no. Okay, I think uh, yeah. Uh, as I, I concur with you, so ma- majorly the moment uh, we see the hacking, the word comes in. You know, whenever in most of my trainings and uh, wherever I uh, deliver the talk, so it excites the people. Like it it uh, raises the antenna, right? So because eavesdropping. Listening into somebody else or getting into somebody else's privacy always excites, right? Looking into somebody else's life. But the point is, uh, what we need to understand is this is not a, uh, not a one step or a one software or a click process. So it needs a lot of foundation. Uh, people from an engineering background or something, maybe from any other stream, so has been you know engineering basically you know gives you and or uh, builds an ability to learn the things in the mind. So this kind of backgrounds would uh, actually add more value in terms of learning uh, a technological courses like cybersecurity. Any any course. So there are 35 different modules which I deliver. So as an one individual, like in an OT area, inter industrial control systems, and to uh, 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 automotive uh, cybersecurity, right? Uh, well, automotive ethical hacking or whatever you want to use, use those names at the end, right? So now. There are a wide variety of areas like avionics, uh, cybersecurity. A lot of new domains are, are coming in, but for this, a foundation is very important, and uh, for this, engineering would add a great value, definitely for sure, right? If if you are you know leaning towards engin- engineering or taking an option of going for an en- engineering as as a graduation study, would be helpful. If not, when you want to choose something else, still you have an option to go with, go, go for the. No uh, cyber security, any of the cyber security courses. Yeah, most importantly, once again, I would like to reiterate whatever uh, Mr. Satish has put forth. Like, um, yeah, more than wanted awareness, unwanted awareness spreads quickly. So it's very important to understand do's and don'ts. It's it's very important to understand a loss of the land, right? So what is no? You you learned it. Hacking. Most of the times, what happens is these kids instead of you know learning this in a step by step process, so they watch. So the wide range of videos that are available on YouTube, right? Some how to hack the Gmail account, how to hack the Instagram of somebody else, the Facebook of somebody else, and then they'll they'll try to work around with this, which is technically might uh, you know end up in, uh, as an uh, illegitimate thing. So bug bounty is one of one good reference that uh, uh, Satish has given, right? So this uh, bug bounty opportunity, there are the kids which I know, you know, even a f- couple of schools and uh, various cities in India, so who are also. A part of the bug bounty program, so small ones like identifying a uh, an across site uh, script tags, or, you know, where it's out of the interest. Uh, Organiz uh, schools are you now building this kind of environment, so that's something you know, you know a real time learning that could come from this. So that's something that I would put forth. <clears throat> thank you, thank you for that uh, insight into bug bounty and how how you know there are gray areas when you think of. uh running into events like this or organizing events like this um we are i think 10 minutes away from close so i i would like to uh, open to audience questions um because there are a lot of young people here and i'm hoping to see some questions come from all of you so go ahead whoever would like to ask questions please uh, uh raise your hand uh, virtually and uh, hazel will unmute you you can ask a question i i just want to uh, basically there are some direct messages came to me like one yeah okay one is uh, i think i which i covered already what which course uh, a 9 to 12 grade child should do i think i covered already 
it yeah. all depends on the interest I, i i don't want to name any course and one more question came was uh, what would you say about all the cyber frauds happening especially like otp fraud uh, qr code fake websites resulting into financial frauds so i just want to say see frauds are different than cyber intrusions you know frauds typically today because we are living in a digital world everything is digital like today most of the upa frauds like some fraudster calling you right saying that i'm calling from bank uh, I, because you are especially this frauds happens with uh, i'm not saying of course even good guys uh, knowledgeable or literate guys also lost money but typically the fraudsters target senior citizens or uh, you know typically uh, not so educated or uh, in the means who are not tech savvy about basically trying to create a fear or oh, your account will be locked tomorrow Uh, uh if you give me the otp i'll unlock your account you know all those are typical if you ask me the common thread is lack of awareness means i don't want to put that into cyber while it's a cyber security domain uh, we use this term called uh, social engineering attacks basically someone trying to trick you not see they're not using any technology they're just simply calling you uh, saying that we're calling from state bank of india uh your uh, uh, your account will be uh, locked tomorrow and uh, i'll help you to unlock your account you know so there there is nothing you no know, it's only the awareness sometimes even i get phone calls i may not have a account with sbi but you know i get a phone call i say okay great uh, no problem help me to unlock my account so i'll i'll i have a nice conversation with them you know because i know nothing is going to happen but then so the point is all this otp frauds i'm sure all of you uh, watch this movie jamtara i think you should watch that movie which is there so i think basically yeah they are real no doubt people are losing money but every time you see people are losing money because they are falling into trap trap of something you know it's all, always a trap they are trying to basically it's so well crafted so well crafted they calling maybe calling sometimes today the lot of new frauds they may call like they calling from your own company where you working from the it department or you are will help you to reset password so i think or most of time you must heard of olx frauds right olx you would have published something in olx you want to sell something like i want to sell a bike i i think more most of you seen i posted a, a post in olx i want to sell a bike then someone will call me uh, i am interested in a bike and uh, can you give me your uh, account number i want to transfer money to you you know they are not transferring money they say oh can you give me your upi uh, qr code you know i think somewhere they're trying to trap you basically to see how they can because today especially all these frauds are mostly upi uh, around the digital wallet frauds they want to uh, steal money in fact i think the only control or only thing is awareness so my request to all of you you have to be very aware you should not click any link you should never ever share otp password even a bank i don't think no bank will ever call you to ask for otp right i think the only thing is awareness so that's what i want to just reiterate for one of the question otherwise there's nothing more about technology see frauds are very different frauds are different than intrusions intrusions probably i can put firewall i can put some controls but for awareness we can't do anything we sometimes call right human stupidity right we can't have we can't put technology for human stupidity right and sometimes we ourselves feel sometimes we ourselves are so means uh, engrossed into something and we may press the link like even if if i am a hr head i get a email oh there's a top 10 recruiters can you please press this email uh, open the attachment i'll i'll quickly open the attachment without knowing that am i pressing a wrong link so i think the only point what i want to reemphasize is because i think i, I i'm very happy anubhava we are in the last day of this month october is celebrated as a cyber security awareness month i oh, think you are it's a coincidence it's a coincidence that you're doing on october this event so this is a cyber security awareness month in fact i i, I was running a lot of sessions also so so my request to all of you please spread awareness among your families friends especially senior citizens and all never ever share any otp or never ever press any link which you feel which is suspicious i'm sorry to uh, digress the topic <laughs> thank you thank you for that uh, heads up uh, satish and uh, on the chat uh, zainab has a question uh, would you want to say something on if we want to go in the technology field and become a great engineer is it important to do engineering zainab i understand this as uh, is it important to do a btech or a be degree to become a 
to be in the technology field and be a great engineer. I hope I got that right, Zainab. Uh, over to you, Mr. Satish and Mr. Vinod. Maybe we know you won't take it because I don't. I already spoken enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, you need just passion. I don't think you need an engineering degree, honestly. While no doubt we are tuned to uh, engineering is definitely important, and we all know, right? But uh, I don't think even today a lot of startups they don't worry about your academics. In fact, I know a lot of startups they don't look at your education. But having said that, I don't want you to uh, not to. Uh, of course, engineering or any related degree is great, but I, I believe you should be passionate on what you do, not just the degree. Maybe we know you want to add something. Mr. Vinod, do you want to add something to it? Definitely, I would say engineering would add a great value. So I, I would say that engineering would add a great value, but it is not mandatory or it's not a must to have an uh, engineering background to you now to flourish in cybersecurity or in any technology field, if you ask me, it's, it's back then and as, as uh, time and again Satish was coding, like it's a decade before chapters, all of this. Now, the, 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 this last one decade, the new thing that I say is uh, organizations are looking at the people who has uh, you now passion towards technology, who is interested you know, and connected to the technology and uh, love what they're doing. They enjoy what they're doing. So going to the work is not a nine to five job, but it is something like uh, like it's 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 uh, you you should live with it so you should enjoy it and uh, it should embrace it so this is something um, with which basically you need to look forward and there is one more question from tanush vyas ethical hacking right so a lot of interest in it and uh, what is the resource should be used to be followed to learn ethical hacking uh ethical hacking you have a google itself is a great resource uh, tanush but again channelizing is what very important so what you are looking at and uh, what you are at right now. So you have something like an hack the box, you have something like a Pentester Pentest Academy kind of a lab. So open uh, free labs are there like tryhackme.com. These are the good resources I would say to start with, even with the, you know, eight, ninth, tenth, eight, ninth, tenth, if you're really passionate about, you know, to uh, play around with this, yes, that's a good start to go with. But again, uh, it's, it's all got to do with your passion and you have to, what are the techniques that you learn? You know, to use legitimately and uh, that's a disclaimer you could take it. Thank you, Mr. Vinod. So, Sarvajit has a question. Uh, okay, it's, it's similar. What type of course should we pursue in engineering for working in cyber security and ethical hacking? Good. So, what kind of course? Could be. Yeah. Every engineering has an opportunity, as uh, uh, we, we said earlier. If you get into the uh, mechanical, learn the cyber security uh, in, in plus mechanical. So mechanical engineering plus cyber security, which would you now get you a position in an uh, in, in, uh, automotive cyber security. So which is which has a high demand. It's a niche area. Similar way, you know, any engineering you get into, so you have to add that cyber security in addition to that, right? So that's something which I would like to put forward. And uh, ethical hacking and all is a sub, uh, you know, one, one of the chapters. As, as uh, Satish has given an elaborate uh, and detailed information about it, ethical hacking is one small part of the whole gamut of cybersecurity, right? So, yeah, over to you, Satish. Something would like to add? Yeah, yeah, I think don't worry about uh, any any engineering is okay. If you go back to the old days, right? Infosys used to pick up every engineering, uh, what do you call it, any stream, right? And then they used to train. Do you agree? So today we have. A lot of guys working in this domain, right? From different different domains. It's not necessarily you should be from computer science or from electronics. I think as Mr. Windows said, the, the foundation engineering is very is good, right? but then uh, cyber security and uh, ethical hacking is an extension to it because the fundamentals doesn't change. And as Mr. Windows said, like if you're a mechanical engineer, probably you you understand the mechanics and if you can get into the IoT or maybe automotive, you know, automotive today, automotive security. Right? along with mechanical probably if you're working in automotive domain so i think cyber security is everywhere is required everywhere yes. today uh, automotive security industrial security today especially a lot of industrial automation is happening today so uh, every factory every factory is today automated now there also you need to secure those systems today do you, i'm sure all of you agree right today every factory every setting right is completely automated computer driven iot driven industrial control systems 
so i think that which probably you had to learn in your whole engineering whatever mechanical or whatever right or, but imagine even if you done civil right but there is a whole gamut of security which is required for the whole civil engineering right today i think security cuts across if you ask me cyber security is cutting across i told you it's all about securing the enterprise assets right and everything is asset for the enterprise so i think don't worry about yeah. which particular engineering stream any engineering is okay but then you add your knowledge it's more like a, a professional knowledge you are trying to add on top of what you learned right yeah uh, so there's another question from uh, gg what what is the job opportunity compared to other fields so i like to take take this this is a very interesting question i keep getting this <laughs> okay. rather some rather some people ask kis mein paise zyada milega you know so basically <laughs> if you ask me every domain you know there, there are always every domain is good it all depends on i think i call it as you have to master right so i, I think there there's no domain which is bad honestly speak right every domain right every domain has is good and uh, if you ask me the job opportunity wise i think foundation engineering whatever you do and then based on your as i told you if you are good in developer you can talk application security you are good in systems you can talk system security you are good in networking you are good in for example you want to get into audit as a domain i think the point is there are so many as my friend you know said there is a huge skill set gap today enterprises are unable to find the right resources i'm not saying so see there's always a, a two two story em, see prospect to employees will say sadhi i don't get phone calls and when i talk to employer they say we're not getting good candidates you know so it's always both sides if you ask me so the employer is looking for the right resource with right skill set because probably so a lot of time people do half heartedly you know i think don't do anything half heartedly do go to the core be very passionate and i'm sure i think there are plenty of opportunity in every domain maybe reach out to me offline you, i can i can call out every domain has opportunity but if you show the passion but if you show like you see people tend to move like they'll do half multimedia then they say no multimedia my friend has done uh, something so i'll move there okay. probably you're not you're jumping here there so just focus on when what your passion is what heart says and then i'm i'm telling there are plenty of opportunity if you go and show them passion employer will love you and will take you inside one minor i would like to put forth the continuation to the satesh uh, i'll tell you technically when i when i deliver the trainings or work on the capacity building projects for the uh, automotive organizations or organizations which are into you know devices uh, development right so now the biggest challenge is the people uh, now what whom they need right the resources that they need you have the ethical hackers available in the market but they don't need ethical hackers as is where this is they need they want somebody who understands the ecus of the uh, car uh, uh, whatever the you now tcus of the car they typically the mechanical engineering whatever the components that are there so who understands this on top of it who understands ethical hacking procedure for which they could use it for the penetration testing example i would say so embedded in the similar way a device development let's say lnt take an example of it so they want to have an an uh, a device development uh, uh, team with the penetration testing or security testing they want somebody who knows the vlsi who understands the embedded systems who understands the logic gates who understands the you know pcbs and then they can work it out so this this is something what they will be looking at folks. so yeah rightly said by him do it with a passion and i think do it in a style so definitely yes you will enjoy it uh thank you thank you and at this point i can i request all the participants to turn on their cameras we want to take the picture preserve for posterity and share on social media of course could everyone turn on their videos if anyone's having a problem just raise your hand turning on your video maybe we need to enable something for you uh anupama sorry to interrupt we have one more question from sarvajit can we take that up yeah let's just get one picture quickly before okay. we do that yes, all right i think a few more people have to turn on Okay, somebody is having a camera issue. No worries, Tanush. So 
Dagni, shall we good to go for a picture? Okay, well, while people are getting up their cameras, uh, Hazel, what was the question? Yes, one minute. Uh, what age is best to start uh, a career in cyber security like performing bug bounty? Honestly, there's no age uh, uh, as such. Of course, uh, I see a lot of even students who just passed 10th, even 11th, 12th, even college, I think. Uh, but but the point is you need because see uh, I, if you have the required knowledge because to understand how systems work and all it, it takes some time so in that context I I don't see see today children are very smart and there are a lot of smart kids right who probably would have started maybe in class eight itself but otherwise I don't think there's any age as such maybe we know they want to add something. As rightly said uh, by Satish, um, so there are the schools who have started, you uh, know, who run the bug bounty. So they, there are the, you know, colleges which support for the bug bounty right from. So it's it's like interesting career and uh, at any age, uh, right? So legally, it should be permitted by your uh, parents. And obviously, again, that's something what you need to look at it. Yes, provided they allow you at any age. So your logic has no limit. Do we have any other questions? Because we have kind of overshot time. I don't think we have any other questions. So, uh, well, we would love to have another edition of this. I'm sure uh, students will have more questions and having to think through what you've shared. So, um, while we come to the end of this first webinar series in the in our webinar series i thank both mr satish and mr vinod and the audience turnout as well i thank all the students and the counselors who made time to come and attend this webinar we will be hosting another one next week we, this is a weekly series so um while uh, i thank you for your time i hope it was worth your time and i hope Mr. Satish and Mr. Vinod also enjoyed sharing their views here. Thank you once again to everyone. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to address young audience. So thanks a lot, uh, Atria. Thanks a lot, uh, Puma and your team, uh, for giving this opportunity and uh, put forth my talk on this. Uh, now, Thank enough. you. We hope to see you again very soon. Both. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. See you, Suresh. Thank you.